Hey everyone, Elizabeth Scala here. Welcome back to another video regarding being a patient, going through surgery and recovering afterwards. So I'm here to help you, either a future patient of surgery or someone who's just undergone surgery, or maybe you're in the recovery process. These videos are about the patient's perspective and what happens as we travel along this journey. I myself, as I said, was a patient um, and I, I was an elbow surgery patient. And when I was going through all this, I tried to find support and um, other patient perspectives to kind of clue me in as to what to expect. And I really didn't find much about what the patient goes through. Sure, I found books on the surgery and I found medical text for healthcare providers. But what specifically does the patient um, need to know? What are some tips and tricks of surgery? So this topic, oh dear, if I could go back in time and take my own advice, this is probably one of the videos that would have helped me the most. So yeah, even as I think about this, I get kind of sad, <laughs> but don't worry, I won't be sad for you. Um, what am I going to talk about? Doing your own research and finding healthcare providers, um, a team that works for you and decisions that work for you. So what does that mean? Okay, I fell off my bike and after I fell off my bike, we rushed to an urgent care center. All of this happened to during um, that global pandemic. And um, I personally didn't wanna to go to the emergency room. I had, I worked at a hospital and I had friends who worked at the emergency room and at other, you know, really nursey type jobs. And I even texted one of them and I said, I don't wanna to go to the emergency room, like what should I do? And she even recommended go to an urgent care facility. They at least can take an x-ray and assess the situation. Cause maybe I just had a bad sprain, you know, maybe I just had a bad bruise. That didn't wind up being the case, but here we go. So I went to that urgent care facility and that was fine. I mean, my husband had burnt his hand a while back and we went to this particular facility and they really helped him. And um, we really appreciated that, that facility. And so we went to that one. Okay. They did take an x-ray and they came in the room and said, Elizabeth, the x-ray confirms your arm is broken and you need surgery. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I lost it and I went, I think, into a little bit of shock because here's what happened. They made me an appointment for a surgeon that was that day and my husband and I just rushed off to the surgeon and I, I wrote about this in my book. It was as if we were following breadcrumbs along a trail. This is what I, this is my lesson learned and this is what I'm going to recommend to you. Try not to react um, try to respond proactively. Try not to just shut down and go into shock when you hear the term broken limb needs surgery. Try not to catastrophize and go into shock and just, you know, you know, woe is me and I I'm helpless. And yes, the medical establishment, tell me what to do. Okay. That's sadly what I did and what I'm saying I should not have done because so from the urgent care facility my husband and I drove to that surgeon's office and we met with the well not we he wasn't even allowed in I mean decision wrong <laughs> so I met with the physician assistant the surgeon wasn't even there that day I think he was in surgery um and she confirmed it she's like it is broken and for that kind of break you know ideally surgery we met the, and when I say we, my husband was allowed to come in and meet with the surgeon the following week, the pre-surgery visit. Um, and he did say, yeah, with a break like this, surgery is often required. However, may not be the only option. Right then and there, I'm like, oh my goodness. He showed me, he said, if you have surgery, you know, that's one side. But if you don't have surgery you may never be able to push off a wall again. Well, first of all, I can't even push off a wall right now with this arm. <laughs> See, I can't, whatever. But he said, if you don't have surgery, you may not be able to push off a wall if you don't have the surgery. Now, in that moment, I should have contemplated, 
well, not have it, have it. You know, I literally was like, okay, surgeon, you told me I need surgery, so I'm gonna have surgery. My other mistake was, I only met that one surgeon who subsequently has wound up being a surgeon that I'm not even really fond of because in my opinion, the surgery and the subsequent way that he handled me afterwards was botched and inappropriate and just did not work out. <laughs> That's why I don't talk about who the surgeon is because I don't, I would never recommend him. So first mistake, I only went to one surgeon and I just listened to him as if that was the only truth. So maybe I needed to get a second opinion. Why was I in such a rush? I mean, I guess he was saying, oh my goodness, the longer you wait, the arm, it's going to be stuck. If you wait to have surgery, then your arm is going to be stuck. Well, my arm is stuck right now. And I had surgery with that surgeon. Okay. So my first mistake was I only went to one surgeon and I didn't get a second opinion or a third or whatever. I didn't, you know, I didn't seek out a surgeon. I went to the surgeon that was appointed to me. They made me an appointment and I went. I didn't even talk to my friends at the hospital. I didn't try to find another surgeon. I just followed the breadcrumbs, as I said. So first mistake. So for you, if you can, if you have time, if you're able, if your insurance will cover it, what have you, maybe get more than one opinion. Then when the surgeon comes back and says, well, surgery will do this. And if you don't have surgery, you may not be able to push off a wall. Think to yourself, then do I really need or want the surgery? How important is it for me to push off the wall? If I don't have the surgery, what does my recovery look like then? And, and how would my arm heal? Would I be put in a cast? Like when I was a kid, I broke my wrist. I didn't have surgery. They just put me in a cast for six weeks and then they took the cast off and I was better. Now, of course, a wrist is different than an elbow, so I'm not comparing apples to oranges. But my point is, is surgery even the right answer? I will say, I just think that I was in a state of shock. I was following medical advice as if it was God. Um, I was put, I put myself in a hierarchy of medical professional, little patient that has to follow the rules. All these things are inappropriate. So, you know, if the surgeon that you meet with and you're not sure, meet with another one. If the surgery is recommended, but there's other options, think about it. And um, yeah, you are the person in control. You are the navigator of this train. You are the conductor of this train. You should feel equal to your healthcare team and not below. And don't ever feel like you are a bad or not compliant patient if you decide that something that's recommended is not for you. So advocate for yourself, take your time, be responsive and proactive rather than reactive or just shutting down in shock. <sighs> I feel like I wish I could have taken that own advice, but here we are. Life is as it is. Uh, I'm fine with my arm. There's other videos about everything happens for a reason. I'm a yoga teacher now. I feel great. <laughs> and I'm helping you along the way. So speaking of helping you, I hope this video was um, helpful. Leave comments, questions below. And if you have topics of interest or something you'd like me to touch on, feel free to visit me over at my website, elizabethscala.com, or email me, support at elizabethscala.com. So, alrighty, that's that for today, and we'll see you in the next video.